Let's talk to noodles. Come along. Tomatoes is one that I typically plant from a start from the nursery. And the reason I do this is because if you're growing tomatoes from seed yourself, you have to start so much earlier in the season. We're talking like you're planting indoors in like February. So you just have to be ahead of the game. So if you're not quite there, starts are a great way to go from the nursery. Um, and then it just depends on with tomatoes what you're looking for. Are you looking for something to can? Are you looking for something to just eat fresh? Are you looking for something to make fresh salsa with? Are you liking just like those little tiny cherry tomatoes that are super sweet and delicious? So it really just depends on what you like. Um, maybe I'll walk you through a couple of my favorite varieties and why. For a cherry type tomato, my favorites are a sweet 100 or a sun sugar. And the reason I like these is they're super sweet, um, little. I typically reach for the sun sugar because they're orange and I like a variety of color with my tomatoes, but both of these varieties are super great ones to choose from. So if you're a tomato canner, the great ones to choose from are something that's big and meaty. So we're talking big beef, beef steak, beef master, big boy, anything that says big in the word. Those are great ones that are extra big and meaty for putting into your jars. If you are the tomato eater that just can't get tomatoes soon enough, come with the early girl. An early girl, or there's one called 4th of July, those are one of your uh, shortest length plants, so you're gonna get tomatoes the soonest. They're not very big tomatoes. They're, you know, I don't know about that big, <laughs> but um, they're great for like the person that really wants a jump start on their team homegrown tomato in the garden. So when picking tomatoes, you want to look for days to maturity. So that is going to tell you how long this plant is gonna to take to grow up and start producing fruit. Tomatoes can go anywhere from 50 days to like 120 days. So if you live somewhere that your growing season's a little bit shorter, 120 days, you're gonna start maybe getting blossoms and fruit um, starting to form by the time our frost hits and your tomato plants are done. So that's a super important thing to look at when picking out a perfect tomato. So for example, right here we've got an early girl and she's gonna take about 50 to 55 days to start producing um, her fruit. Whereas right here we have a pineapple heirloom, which is like so yummy and delicious, but this is gonna take somewhere about 85 days. So you can see there's gonna be a difference in when you can start picking your tomatoes. So another thing you're gonna look for with tomatoes is determinant versus indeterminate. So for example, we've got this Parks Whopper, which is an indeterminate tomato. And an indeterminate is just describing the way the tomato plant acts. So determinant, your vine will grow fruit, grow fruit, grow fruit, where your determinant's gonna grow and stop. and fruit. So typically your determinant tomato is going to fruit sooner um, and be a shorter length tomato than your indeterminant. Now we've picked out our perfect plant and we're gonna take it home to transplant it. Now, planting correctly is so important to help your plant thrive and grow. Typically plant almost every plant the same way. We've got the same set of rules we're going to follow. But there is always an exception to the rule and tomatoes and peppers both fall underneath that exception. If you look really closely at the stem, you can see almost like these little fibers, like hairs. And as what happens with these tomatoes, if this gets planted under the ground, those little fibers are going to turn into roots and it is going to make your plant, tomato plant bigger, stronger, and be able to withstand all the heavy fruit that it's going to get during the season. So that's why I say tomatoes are an exception to the rule because they are one of the only plants that you plant deeper than what they come. This one you can see it's not too root bound. I still will kind of just tease the, the base of that root. And then I'm going to take, if you see down here, there's these two sets of leaves that come off either side of my branch. I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna do what's called pinching that off. I simply take my finger and pinch it off because I'm actually gonna go up one more stem. There's a couple different ways you can plant deep. If you have a really big tomato that's a lot larger than this one, you can do um, like a trench planting where I'd come along, I would dig a trench, I would actually lay my, my tomato in the ground and then bend the top up and then bury. But because this tomato is not that big yet, I've just removed those bottom leaves 
and then I will dig a hole a lot deeper than I did for a plant that if I'm just wanting to plant right to soil level because I want this one to be deep. I want the soil to go up around that stem. All right, so I've dug a hole. I'm going to place it down inside and then I'm going to bury, I don't know, maybe two or three inches of my stem underground. And then I'm going to tap and that's how you plant a tomato.